Hey, what's up guys? It's Steven from TechSteveHD.com, making technology easier. In today's video, I'm going to do an unboxing and setup on a Canon HFR800 camcorder. But before I do that, just letting you guys know, I have a new website that I just launched with ask.techstevehd.com. It's going to be a community if you have questions or you're trying to figure out something, everyone can come together and get that answered for you. So please visit that website if you actually want to uh, ask a question or respond to some people who join up. It's free, of course. So without further ado, sit back and relax and let's do the unboxing. First, you get an instruction book, you get an HDMI cable that comes with it, you get a USB cable to connect to your computer, a power supply, and you also get a high performance battery, and you get the unit right here. So let's talk about this camera real quick. As you can see, it's very small in size. A lot of cameras nowadays are really, really tiny compared to the old, bigger style that used the VHS tapes. Uh, this has an advanced 57 times zoom, it also records an MP4, which is pretty cool. Now inside here, you have a touch screen. The one feature I like about this one, it has a microphone input and you can also uh, hook up headphones to it so someone can monitor uh, your uh, performance there. Has the HDMI output as you can see here. And then if you open that little door, that's where you put your micro SD card slot right there. So on the back here, you have your little battery compartment where you can slide it up and then lift up. Now there's your battery pack. And you can see with the battery on there, still pretty small. And then over here, you have your pause and uh, stop button and then your charging port right there. Now, unlike some of the more fancier cameras, uh, this one, you have to manually open the door. So when you get done, make sure you close that. You do have this little lip here so you can put filters on it. So let me go ahead and turn it on real quick to see what the screen looks like. You're gonna hit English to get started once you turn it on. And then you have to hit this little play button to get it going. You're gonna set the calendar and now it says setup complete. You can access the menus. So you have a cool little uh, features here. You have your house where you can go in and do some shooting modes. You have your video quality and you have other settings. But let's go ahead and film with it. That's really why most people look at these videos. So this is footage from the camcorder right now. So I actually have it set up in my normal uh, setting where I use my Sony camera, which you can see right here. A nice little Sony there. But uh, outside, we'll be able to uh, test the optical uh, stabilization, the zoom, and see how good the colors are. How much charge to it, so I got about 17 minutes to uh, get some footage for you guys because I didn't feel like waiting. Uh, the first test I'm going to do is do a optical uh, stabilization test uh, just by walking here, and I'm going to bounce the camera up and down. The cool thing about this particular camera is that it's supposed to have a side-to-side, -side, front and back, and uh, a really good stabilization no matter how the camera gets shaken. So let's go and give it a chance. Let's go and give it a test. So here's the up and down. So mind you, I won't be able to see this footage until I play it back. Now here's the side to side. And then here's a rotating. Sorry if I'm getting you guys sick or uh, this is a crazy view. So the second test I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do the zoom test. So I'm gonna go over here to some water at uh, the place I live and uh, just see how far this thing can zoom out. Now it's supposed to be up to 57 times, but it's not all optical, but they didn't really state which optical. All right. Thing is when you zoom it out that far, you get a little bit lost. So while we're doing this, let me go ahead and uh, pause this and put my other microphone in. I have a lapel mic. Okay, so now I got my other microphone in. We have a train coming by. Let's take a look. Looks to be pretty, uh, pretty stable. Now, one thing I do notice about this camera is that I'm in a lot of light and I can barely see the screen. So now you don't see this, but on the screen, there's actually indicators showing how my voice, so I can see how loud it is. And that's another feature that I like by having that microphone input. You can see where you're peeking out. 
All right, so let's do a quick little photo. And again, these will be on the video. So let's do some close-up shots of this rose here. And you can hear there's motorcycles and all kind of stuff going on in the background. And here's some more color shots for you guys. There's some regular green grass, and then these are some flowers that they plant. It's really nice. Again, this footage is pretty raw. I didn't, I'm not gonna edit any of this. And let's get a little closer, see if this stays zoomed in. Almost touching it. Cool thing about this camera, it automatically moves to macro. So if I move it away, the micro goes off. It goes back into stabilization. I move it close. The lens detects it and it goes back into macro mode so it knows it's really close. That's another cool feature about this. And this is an indoor shot. And I will tell you the screen looks pretty, uh, pretty dull there. So again, this is real uh, time, I'm in the elevator right now and uh, uh, I haven't changed any exposure or anything like that. So let's go ahead and wrap up the video. In conclusion, let me tell you a few things I didn't like about the camera. One is in the direct sunlight, I couldn't really see the touch screen and since it doesn't have a viewfinder, that was really hard to control the camera. The next thing I didn't like about it is that the manual lens cover, but keep in mind that most cameras in that range have a manual lens cover. One other thing I didn't like about it is that uh, it muted the sound whenever the wind hit the microphones. And uh, that's actually uh, could be really bad whenever you get your return footage on it. Now let's talk about some positive things what I did like about it. Uh, the colors look really good in the sunlight as you could see uh, in some of the demonstration I showed. Uh, the microphone input allow you to bypass that mic muting feature. Also it has the three inch touch screen which is really cool to be able to get through some of those menus which a lot of cameras don't have that. And uh, it also has a really small footprint, so it makes it very easy to carry around instead of lugging around a big camera. If you have any comments, please leave those below. And like all my videos before, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.